investing in lawsuits. That's what litigation funds do. And while these funds have been around a while, they're increasingly becoming a force to be reckoned with. Joining us with more is Ellie Raisin. He's editor-in-chief of Westlaw Business Currents. Ellie, welcome. Thank you. You know, let's talk a little bit about these funds. You know, just how prevalent are they in the U.S. and the U.K.? So I'd want to start off with a caution, which is they're still small, but our analysts at Westlaw Business have been looking at them, and they are increasingly, as you say, a force to contend with for a number of reasons. First of all, they're pursuing far more sophisticated, complex commercial litigations against big companies. That matters to big companies, of course. Secondly, their management is made up of more sophisticated lawyers coming from top law firms. And they've also got more sophisticated money behind them. And newest of all this is that there's a series of public companies that have listed in the UK to raise money to put into these litigations as investments. You know, so who is putting the money up into these? You've uncovered some pretty big names. So there are several big players behind these scenes that we know of and probably more that we don't know of. But among the big names are Bailey Gifford, which is a big mutual fund manager based in Scotland, Fidelity International, and Invesco, which owns a big piece of one of the public companies I was telling you about earlier. So for an institution is the payout, the potential payout really in some of these uh, litigation efforts, that big, that attractive? So there's two elements of these payouts that make them really attractive to institutions. First of all, they can be really big and they can be really quick. The other thing about it is that they're alpha. They're uncorrelated to anything else in the marketplace. Whether a judge rules on your behalf or not has nothing to do with where the stock or bond markets are that day. Yeah, okay. Now, do you see eventually more private equity, maybe even venture capital kind of coming into these funds? Yeah, so this market was actually led by what you could consider private equity firms, not of the big name variety that we all know, but it's private money being put to work in, in rather dedicated investment strategies that others don't know. And so, yes, we do see the potential for more private equity type money to come in. And let's talk a bit, if we can, about the types of litigation they're involved in. I mean, I think people think ambulance chaser funds to a degree, but I mean, that's the old day, right? That's absolutely the case. It is the old days. And there still are players who do the ambulance chasing game, but that's not the group that we're talking about here. The group that we're talking about here is pursuing high-end, commercial, expensive litigation. So it could be intellectual property litigations. It could be large torts like Exxon Valdez. It's that sort of thing. And that's why big companies need to be concerned about this. OK, now the recent one was a ruling in uh, Britain, a judge kind of looking to uh, widen I guess uh, justice, the ability to uh, get justice for a lot of litigants, and that's opened the floodgates there to some degree, right? So what we see in the UK is actually a brand new law that came out called the Legal Services Act, and basically it opens the door to lots of new ways for legal services to be provided. This fits in within that, and essentially what's going on is that all of a sudden there is a new, there is a new ability to provide legal services in these non-law firm kind of ways, and again, it feeds into this notion of opening up the floodgates, as you said, it also democratizes things. So plaintiffs, poor people who were affected by things at one point who couldn't face up to the big, rich corporations, all of a sudden can because there's somebody who's willing to help them foot the bill. Okay, now is there any kind of structured payout for these, uh, these cases for an investor or does it vary, I guess, case by case? It does vary case by case, but the way that these funds are set up is much like any other hedge fund. So they basically have a two in 20 structure that's familiar to any hedge fund investor, except the, th the investment that they're investing in is not the markets, it's rather litigations. Ellie, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. And that is Ellie Raisin, Editor-in-Chief of Westlaw Business Currents. And you can find the Westlaw Business article on litigation funds in the UK by clicking on the Related Documents tab below. This is Reuters.